So I had a conversation with my mom, and she was telling me like three years ago. I think it looked better from this side. Oh my eyes, Jesus no. Um, at one of her class reunions, this lady was talking to her. <sighs> so, because my mother had moved up here before she actually um got pregnant with me, a lot of people back home in North Carolina don't know who she was pregnant by. So they was talking about, like, she was talking to my dad. Basically, the lady was saying, yeah, I was talking to him, and he was just saying, like, he really regrets not having a relationship with his child. And he hopes they can fix that. <laughs> That's my voice. I don't know. I don't know why that's my voice. Maybe it's my bullshit voice. But um, I basically asked my mom, I was like, why did you even listen? Like, why did you entertain the conversation? She was like, I wanted to know what was said. I was like, I think that's our difference. I'm way past that. I don't care to hear. I'm going to say for all my neglected children out there, right? You know who your father or mother is. They know who you are. Y'all still don't have a relationship, right? For us. Okay. I could give two fucks about what you tell to somebody else, right? I am here. If you want to have a relationship, like if you really want to have a relationship, I am alive and breathing. Digital technology. Some people are alive, but they're not breathing on their own. I guess that was my reasoning, but I'm just like, why you keep telling other people that you wish you could fix your mistake? Why don't you just fix it? I'm alive. You're the same nigga, right? The same nigga that when my grandma died, I told you I didn't like you, and you lied in my face and looked me in my eyes and said you've been to every birthday party. That might be why I don't like birthdays. Mind you, this nigga only went to one, and I know he went to one because he had on this colorful ass sweater. I was like, why you got on that colorful ass sweater? This is when people used to call colorful shit gay. And my mom was like, oh, that's Coogee. That was in style. And I was like, uh. Right? That's how I found out about fucking Coochie, because you was in one... Literally going through my memories. He also introduced me to the song Uchi Wally. Great memories with my dad. I'm trying to tell you, this, these are great memories. Like, momental. Monumental. There it is. So, Grandma died at 11. I think I was introduced to Uchi Wally maybe, like, a couple years prior. Um, I don't see this nigga again until I'm 16. When he pops up here for my birthday. So I used to go to North Carolina like during the summer. So I would have my Christmas in July. And I would get all my Christmas presents that they supposedly bought for me. And my birthday presents that for some reason never wanted to just mail or travel up to give me. I always had to wait till July. So some people are thinking like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like you get two Christmases. It's not cool. It's not fun. No. I felt like y'all just didn't want to visit me. That, that was my interpretation as a child. It wasn't, oh, two Christmases. It was like, you don't want to visit me. So, don't talk to this nigga, right? I done told him I don't like him. Grandma done died. Grieving. Changing. Kipper has already been uh, established. Um, I get a text message like, what's your address? My number's been the same since the fourth grade. My father never used my number. So... I knew his number. I done texted the number so much and I got a response. I thought I had the wrong number. So I, I stopped looking at the number. So when it texted and it said his name, I'm like, oh, it works. It w I wouldn't have thought it worked. So um, 16 years old, um, having a sleepover because I love sleepovers for my birthday. And my dad, who I don't talk to, is supposedly popping up. Hmm. But the gag is, <laughs> he was not up here for me. Obama was at a GW game and my stepbrother plays for GW. So they went to his game. Obama was there and they remembered. <laughs> 2008, I think that's when Obama first got in. I didn't have to say it. My mom was just like, so let me find out. Obama has to go to a game for you to actually come up here and visit your daughter. Yeah, that's exactly what occurred. Exactly. You know what the bigger gag is? <laughs> The bigger gag is, he didn't know it was my birthday. <laughs> Y'all. Now, of course, these laughs are, like, sarcastic. I'm, I'm not pissed anymore. It's just, like, really, nigga? Um, 
Yeah, so when he realized, because my friends are there, that was that was how my best friends met my dad for the first time, by the way. He digs in his pocket and, like, basically gives me all the cash in his pocket, right? So I'm like, so planned. Thanks. Um, I was like, all right, cool. We can get some pizza tomorrow. That next day, I smoked weed. For good reason. My point for saying that was... I didn't talk to my dad again until my freshman year of college. Okay, so 2010, right? Um, Just shedding some light into my life. Some people are probably thinking like, so was your dad not in your life up until the point where your grandma died or like Uchi Wally? And it's like, him and my mom would text, but usually my stepmom picked me up. So kind of not. Who the fuck do I think I am? They were not texting. They were communicating over a cellular device or a house phone. And um, I found out later, like, all the family that I used to be around was not my dad's family. It was my stepmom's family. Like, when we used to go around there to the country, like, she lived in the country, right? Where, like, half of the family was still in the same street. It's just, like... You gotta, you gotta, you gotta go through fields to get to the different houses, right? He be drinking with the niggas. I ain't see that nigga. So fast forward back to college, right? Uh, Temple is expensive as fuck, right? Um, I'm broke. My mom is paying everything out of pocket. Uh, it's a lot. So let me try. So me, rationally thinking, let me call my dad, right? He's not a crackhead. He's not incapable. He has other children he's taken care of. They just moved into a new house. <gasps> Guys, I forgot an important detail. I'm skipping all over the place. That This is what happens with repressed memory. The summer before college, I met up with my grandmother. Um, my great aunt was getting married. She had me in the wedding as a um, bridesmaid. So I'm down in North Carolina. My, gr- my grandma hit me. I do not fuck with my paternal grandmother. Right? I just... I'm sorry. I can't separate you and him. And you kind of condone the shit he does. She introduced me to my brother's baby mama. She tells me we going on a fucking drive to spend time. For some reason, we end up in the country at this house, which I later finds out is his new house. You set me the fuck up. So we get there. He's looking terrible. My stepmom's looking like she should be with someone else. Doesn't look like love is in the house. Um, He starts talking to me, and y'all, I start laughing and smiling. I started laughing because it just felt like I was talking to a stranger, and I had to keep telling myself, like, this is a part of you. Like, he helped create you. And I'm like... So... I tell him that I'm leaving for college in the next, like, I don't know, month or so. And he writes me a check for $500. And y'all, I really wanted to be 